Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. Today we have a fun project for you. A while back we were talking about some alternative ideas for rocket fuel and Andy came up with the idea of using gummy bears in place of sugar. Well, we figured that somebody must have already tried this, so we searched online and immediately found that the TV show Mythbusters had in fact already done it. Well, we were a little disappointed because we didn't want to just copy someone else's work. So we watched the episode and although they didn't reveal a lot about their fuel mixture, it was clear that it wasn't the same type of fuel that we make. We decided to simply try modifying our existing sugar fuel mixture so that all the sugar content is provided by gummy bears. We'll talk a little bit more about the Mythbusters fuel just a little bit later in the video. We went to the store and we found three brands of gummy bears. They were all very similar, but we purchased the one with the highest sugar content of about 51%. I have two ideas for the fuel mixture, so we're going to make two motors and test them out. We'll be using our newest PVC casing with the number 20 nozzle. If you want to know more about this casing and how to make it, there's a link down in the description to our video with complete instructions for making this easy to build case and nozzle. We're going to start out by just melting the gummies over low heat on our cooktop. They are definitely melting down very well. I will say this, this is the best smelling rocket fuel we've ever made. Now that it's all melted, we'll just pour in the potassium nitrate and continue stirring until that's all mixed together. And now the potassium nitrate's all blended in. We're just going to continue heating this until we get to around 230 degrees Fahrenheit. So we decided on a three cell style motor because that provides the most symmetric burn curve for this style of motor. So we cast these three Bates grain fuel cells here. We're going to load them up into our motors and get out and do a ground test. The top motor has a sugar content of 18% and the bottom motor has a 35% sugar content. All of the sugar in these motors comes from the gummy bears. Now both motors were very difficult to ignite and both fuels burned extremely slow. They burnt for about 55 seconds and provided pretty much no thrust. So why did our results come out so drastically different from the Mythbusters gummy bear motor? Well, as I said before, we're not trying to duplicate the Mythbusters fuel. We're simply trying to see if our sugar fuel mixture can be converted to use gummy bears instead. The Mythbusters didn't actually say what type of fuel they used. The only ingredient we know for sure is that it contained dried gummy bear powder. But based on some of the things they did say about the fuel, my guess is that it was APCP fuel. Now APCP fuel is a powerful rocket fuel used by both professionals and amateurs. If you want to know more about APCP fuel, you can look it up on Wikipedia. Now, APCP fuel is not a sugar fuel, so adding gummy bears to that fuel would essentially be adding a contaminant into an already powerful fuel, which should then result in the reduced performance of the fuel, and that is exactly what it did. Their rocket with the gummy bears in the fuel launched to a lower altitude than the rocket with the standard fuel. It's also interesting to note that in that same TV episode, the Mythbusters also launched a rocket that included poop in the fuel. Yes, they dried out feces and added that to the fuel mixture. The rocket with the poop fuel launched to an even less altitude than the one with the gummy bears. And that makes perfect sense because the gummy bears are around 50% sugar. So they would provide at least some energy to the combustion process, but the poop is likely to offer little to no benefit to the combustion and therefore performed the worst. In short, it's my opinion that the Mythbusters did not actually make true gummy bear rocket fuel. Instead, they used a powerful rocket fuel, introduced some percentage of gummy bears into the fuel, but the fuel was still efficient enough to perform well, even when slightly contaminated. So back to our project. In order to get our motor to be powerful enough to launch a rocket, we need this fuel to burn about 50 times to 100 times faster. I've got three ideas on how to make it burn faster. Number one, 
we're going to change the fuel cell design. In the previous tests, we used three fuel cells in each motor, traditional design. We're going to change that to one single long fuel cell. In our previous experiments, we've seen that the single fuel cell design seems to burn much faster than the three cell design. Secondly, we're going to reduce the nozzle from a number 20 down to a number 18. That will increase the pressure inside the motor, and for sugar fuels, that typically results in a faster burn rate. And for number three, we're going to add some iron oxide to the fuel mixture as an accelerant. Now, we've never used iron oxide before in our fuels, simply because we've never needed to make the fuel burn faster. In fact, all of our previous burn rate experiments have always been about trying to make the sugar fuel burn slower. But I've seen in other videos and read documentation online where some people have used iron oxide and it's been successful as an accelerant, so we're going to give that a try. Now that was really unusual. The burn rate was definitely faster, but the pulsing nature of the motor was really unexpected. I think we're not maintaining enough pressure inside the motor to keep the fuel burning fast. But that seems to show that the motor still might have some potential. For the next test, we're gonna make that exact same motor and the same fuel, but we're gonna reduce the nozzle down to a number 15. That's a significant drop in nozzle size, so let's see what happens. Okay, so that had a similar pulsing effect just like the previous one did. I'm not sure what's causing that, but clearly the motor is still not producing the strong, consistent thrust that we need. Moving forward, we've decided to actually remove the iron oxide from the fuel mixture. I'm not convinced that it's actually helping with this particular fuel, and it does seem to be making the fuel much more difficult to ignite. Also, we're trying to make the simplest possible gummy bear fuel. So we want to use just gummy bears for the sugar content and potassium nitrate for the oxidizer and no other ingredients. For this next one, we're gonna reduce the nozzle again to a number 13. Now that's a very small nozzle for this motor size. We're gonna try the two fuel mixtures again, and let's see what happens. It was very windy on that day, so sorry about the loud wind noise. That was fuel mixture number one, and it was very interesting. It took a long time for the motor to get going, but once it did, it really looked like it was gonna put out some powerful thrust. Unfortunately, the fuel had already been burning inside the motor for about 20 seconds before the motor built up any power. And by that time, the end cap was already very hot and it just blew out. The next one has our second fuel mixture.
That mixture clearly does not perform as well as mixture number one. So we're going to stick with mixture number one from here on out. So the motor with mixture number one seems to have potential. And we need to keep the end cap from overheating. We've done that on several other motors that we've developed in the past, so that's pretty easy to do. Here's that same exact motor with the end cap protected from the heat. Well, a motor exploding is not the worst thing that can happen. In fact, in this situation, it might be a good sign that we're actually able to build up enough pressure inside of this motor to be effective. What do you do when a motor explodes? You make the nozzle bigger until it doesn't explode anymore. Here's that same motor, but we've increased the nozzle to a number 14. Uh. So how about a number 15 nozzle? Uh. Maybe a number 17 nozzle? Now we have something. The motor burnt for a really long time with no thrust, but that powerful burst at the end gave 75 pounds of thrust, more than enough to launch a rocket. Let's go. All right, we are out here today to do our first launch test with our Gummy Bear rocket motor. I've built a nice little three inch rocket just for today's event. And we know this motor gives a really weird burn cycle. So as long as we get that really powerful burst of energy at the end, we should get a good launch. Let's see what we get. So while we wait for this rocket to come down, now would be a good time to tell you, this rocket has no recovery system or parachute. We wanted it to be as lightweight as possible for this launch. We did it! We actually did it. Rocket launch with a true Gummy Bear rocket fuel. All the power provided by that motor was from Gummy Bears and nothing else. Was it the best gummy bear motor possible? No, of course not. If we had switched to a metal casing, we could have decreased the nozzle size significantly. That would have certainly provided a longer and much more powerful thrust. But we did what we set out to do. We launched a rocket with true gummy bear fuel. I hope you enjoyed this video. We had some fun times and we had some very frustrating times during this project. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and tap the like button also, it really helps our channel. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.